It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday presented, of course, by DraftKings. Got to tell you, it feels good to be back home. Feels good to be back in the U.S. of A. A uh, lot to get to that I missed out on over the last couple of days, although really not even that much. We got some Alvin Kamara stuff, some retirements, et cetera. But we also have a stud starting right guard in the NFL, Mark Lewinsky, right guard for the Giants, longtime NFL player. This will be year nine for him already. I remember his rookie year, which just means I'm getting really, really old. Mark will join us uh, momentarily, which will be awesome. A lot to get to on today's show. As I mentioned, we'll get into Labatt, all the things we do. I do have a Labatt take today, speaking of Labatt. But let's just dive right into it with Mark Lewinsky. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. So I told you he was joining us. So the last time I talked to Mark, he was on his rookie contract, was just starting for the Colts, and cleanly shaven. So now, those of you that watch us, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, Mark has a crazy beard going. Dude, there's no way you're going to rock that thing for training camp, right? I'm going to trim it down a lot. You know, it gets hot during those training camps, especially in Jersey. The humidity is pretty nuts. So we're going to we're gonna take it down a lot. But, you know, in this time off, uh, you know, I like to just let it hang. So we're just letting it flow. Talk about your mindset right now, because it always used to be, Mark, weird for me. You know, you want to have fun. You're in year nine, so you're a little bit older now, but you want to have fun and enjoy yourself. Right. But now you're like, dude, it's a week or two away. It's like, <laughs> I, I got to be honest with you, bro. I don't miss that at all. It's like hanging over your head. It's almost worse than camp itself is just like knowing it's coming. Yeah, for sure. Um, I try to take it as slow as I can, for sure. But there's just like, you know, there'll be random times throughout the day or night where it just turns on and I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. Um, and then there's just times like, it's like, you know, I got to tell myself, just chill out a little bit. You got a little bit of time. You got, you don't need to be tense or, or think about things that, you know, there there's unknown things that are going on right now. So just trying to enjoy the last minute of time with the family relax as much as you can because it, it actually translate make you you know everything that you're doing a little bit better so it just trying i've just been working on just being more relaxed over the years and especially during the season uh you know even with more meditation and stuff so i try to have that mindset going into this time and just work out as hard as i can and do everything and you know put the time in but also when i'm when i'm off just be off because i know when the season comes it's just going to be non-stop so you have a really interesting story. And actually, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on is I know you have a football camp coming up at your alma mater. You're a fellow Eastern PA guy like me. But I remember following you. So you went to high school at GAR, which is now combined with the other city schools up there in Wilkes-Barre, which is northeast Pennsylvania. You mm-hmm. went to Lackawanna. So right. um, most guys, and you're from up there, so maybe it's a little bit different. But most of the guys I know that go to Lackawanna, it's either, number one, they had academic issues and they needed to go there to get right there, or number two, for whatever reason, they were kind of like a late bloomer, so they didn't get the offers that they probably should have gotten maybe their senior year. So they had to go to Lackawanna for a year or two to kind of reestablish themselves to get those offers. I want to go all the way back to high school who recruited you, and why did you end up at Lackawanna? So I kind of had a little bit of everything you're talking about. <laughs> I felt like I did have a little bit of that late bloomer too, which was you know good for me to have the opportunity to go to Lackawanna. But when I first started off, um, I had to make the decision early, um, you know, like eighth or ninth grade, if I wanted to continue at school or if I wanted to go to uh, Votech because I was really interested in residential construction work. So that was the route I went where I would spend half my day in the high school and then half the day that I would spend at the Votech. So by doing that, um, you know, I, I was in the process. I, I was in eighth or ninth grade football. I just started in eighth grade. So I really had no idea if I would like football or how things would go with that. But as the process went along, I, you know, I started getting a little bit better 
physically, you know, I was growing into myself. Um, but at the same time, I was enjoying and, and learning the trade, you know, carpentry work and framing and doing all these different things, which at the end of the day, I, you know, I graduated, did well academically, but I missed a couple uh, courses that I needed to end up going to division one school. So that's kind of the reason why I had to go to, you know, it was either me go to a prep school or a junior college. And my high school coach, uh, Tony Khalifi at the time recommend, you know, he's just like, you know, if there's a place that you're going to go, it's either a uh, seminary, which was down the road from me or go to Lackawanna college would probably be the greatest, you know, thing for me to do, you know? So I took a leap of faith of doing that. And, uh, you know, I just worked as hard as I could and, and, and that gave me the opportunity to still develop and get, you know, stronger, get, you know, be able to play against, you know, great talent without it being right in my face right away, which I think ended up helping me in the long term, which then I had the opportunity to go to, you know, you know, I had a, a whole bunch of different schools that I can choose from, which then I was like, I, w I would like to stay within the area and uh, be able to, you know, have family and stuff drive out, which would only be a few hours. Um, so that's why I chose West Virginia. I don't know that I've ever heard that before, man. I mean, because you know that guys that go to Lackawanna, it's usually because they have bad grades. I don't know if I've ever heard before a guy, you know, you didn't know, so you went to the Votech. Like, that's a really – that's a unique story, man. Yeah, it was, it was just something I just I just kept going. You know, I just kept taking it. I felt like those couple of years, it was like two years at a time, two years, you know, four years at a time – there wasn't really long, you know, there wasn't the big picture right away. Um, Cause I had to start, you know, I had to make a decision in, in high school, which route I wanted to go. Then I was spending two years at Lackawanna. Then I spent, you know, two and a half years at West Virginia. And even with my career, you know, I've had a couple of years, um, you know, I was in Seattle for a couple of years, a couple of years at the Colts. And now this will be my second year with the Giants, which when you add it up now, it's, hey, we're, we're in year nine, it's, which is crazy. Um, so just looking back at all the time that I've put into it, it's, you know, it seems like a short period of time, but it's, you know, it's growing as it, as it goes along. Tell me about, um, your camp, how, why you do it, how many years you've done it and why it's important to you. So this will be my second year doing it, um, you know, for, with my name on it, but over the years I've, uh, I've helped out, especially. There was a, uh, a guy named uh, Brian Grahowski that had a camp and, uh, you know, he did the same concept where it was a free camp. Um, and he had, you know, he was like, as long as you finish your uh, school year, he'll uh, he'll give you your money back for the camp. So you had to put a little bit of money into it at the time, but you got your money back, which kind of was a little incentive for the guys to go through the season and all that. Um, but I was helping out with that camp over the years. Um, you know, when I was in college time up to the point. And then it was kind of, you know, with that COVID time, it was kind of weird if, if we wanted to do camps or if we were even able to do camps. So there's a little bit of time that I was interested in doing it, but I didn't know how beneficial it would be at the time. But now that it seems that things are a little bit clearer and I have the idea and, and understanding what I want to do, um, you know, I want to do free camp, everything that I do for the community. I want to make sure that it's free. Everything's you know, they have access to it. Um, we bring in many resources, all the resources I got to where I'm at today. Um, there's going to be a lot of Lackawanna staff within the Wilkes-Barre staff. Um, you know, there's Wilkes-Barre uh, in the Scranton area, greats. Uh, you know, there's going to be Mark Duda. Uh, Ronnie Salt was there last year. Uh, Greg Skrepnek is from GER. He'll be there. Um, so, you know, all the guys that we can bring from the area. And, and I reach out to guys last minute. This is really close to camp this year. You know, the camp's going to be July 23rd, which is right around the corner. But um, I'll reach out to the guys, uh, you know, the NFL guys to see if they're available to do it. Because it's it's only it's under a two-hour drive. So we'll see what we can do. That's awesome, man. Skrepanak is a big dude. <laughs> I, I yeah. know all those names, man. You know, when you grow up where I do, you know, you hear about all the Scranton Wilkesbury guys – over the years, in fact, my high school played a couple of years ago in the state semifinals or quarterfinals against Scranton Prep. So, like, I I follow them uh, as well. That's awesome, man. Well, good for you, um, and good for the Giants last year. You guys kind of surprised everybody. You've been on some playoff teams. I mean, you started so, on some good teams with the Colts. Did you? Were you surprised 
the way that the season went last year for the Giants? Because you kind of caught up on people out of nowhere, and then you end up winning a road playoff game. You end up having an awesome year. Um, I, for us, it, we didn't ever think that because we were just grinding. We, you know, we were saying we were going to stay low the whole year. We were just going to put all the effort that we had in the off season and training camp, and make sure that we were we were doing everything and every. You know, we were we were putting in the work for those games because we know that we were going to have to scratch and claw and do whatever we could to get in these games if we had to run the ball or we had to do certain plays or whatever we were going to have to do. Um, so the mindset was to you know everything we do was be fast and. And we had to make sure that we were doing everything that we could early on the games to put us in situations to win last minute. And, you know, we had a little mono, you know, we get these guys in the deep end and, the, you know, in the second half. So we were doing everything that we could to stay in the games and we were just going to grind and wear them out in the second half. So that was kind of the mindset that we had throughout the season and it was working for us, um, you know, and we and and for this year, it's great to see the mindset that we still have, and we are able to add some assets as well. So, um, things that we needed, um, you know, with the transition and with new coaches and and players and all that stuff. So it's great to see where we're going to be. Well, the things I need this weekend: Labatt Blue Light. If you want to take things to the next level, drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly, of course. It's beer. It's made in uh, Labatt, USA, Buffalo, New York. All right, Mark. So I got to ask you about Brian Dayball because when I was in New England playing for the Patriots, he was the tight end coach. He's an awesome dude. I don't know what he's like as a head coach, but he's an awesome dude. Um, I'm curious, what's he like as a head coach? What What do the guys like about him, and, and why do you think he wasn't able to, able to lead you guys so much success last year? Um, I think he's done a great job um, just making sure that he doesn't make us too high or too low. Um, he knows how to keep it light at times, and he also knows how to be on our ass. Um, so he knows exactly what needs in the ass of us. Um, you know, that he tries to keep it consistent and focus on points that we need to do, um, you know, and be consistent, just like I said, um, you know, starting fast. But we also need to be smart, tough, and dependable dependable every day um and we and we're just trying to get one percent better as well you know everybody says that but you know at the end of the day we need to practice and do things that we need um to get us better for the next day and the next opponent ahead um it it looks like when you see pictures and videos he's got a decent amount of swag going do you guys do you guys feel that yeah i think um he yeah and, and they do a good job of uh you know highlighting a lot of that stuff, you know, making sure that we see all that, uh, you know, on media as well. Uh, he always has his good J's on and, and he's always rocking, you know, he's always rocking his, uh, you know, is, is that shine on there, you know, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a fun dude. Uh, he knows how to keep it light. Um, you know, he knows how to be honest. Uh, he's, he's awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting, Mark, because you know I'm, I'm at the I'm a I'm an analyst now, right? So we talk about these things, and there are people that I don't know how much you pay attention to what's going on with the running back position and the running back market and what those guys are making and guys taking pay cuts and getting cut and obviously Saquon has his uh, contract situation. What I think is interesting about it is like there's this school of thought that. Running backs don't really matter. And I guess I'm just curious about your opinion on that, being that you were in Indy with Jonathan Taylor. Now you're in, in New York and you have Saquon. I watched a bunch of your games last year. Man, it's hard to watch a Giants game and not say that Saquon makes a difference in, in, in the outcome of games and wins and losses and doesn't make a difference. Hey, he's a great player. You know, at the end of the day, the running back is, is a great position. Uh to win games, you know, just like I was talking early, you can run the ball and, and eat the time and clock up or, you know, do it the hard way. Um, you know, he's, he's an asset that, um, that helped us win games last year. You know, when we needed those big runs that we were talking about, he was there and he was able to do it. Um, and he's, he's great to throw the ball to and get those hard earned yards that you need as well. Um, you know, the running back position is, is a position, you know, I, 
from where I started in, in high school, it was always, you know, we had, and it, it, all we did was hand the ball off. That's all we did. We didn't, you know, we, every once in a while, we threw some pop passes saying, Hey, we're going to, you know, just as a change up to, to get the linebackers to, to step, you know, to kind of have a little bit of sense of maybe it's not a run, but you know, it, for me, it's always started on the ground game. So it's kind of hard to say that the running back position is, is not something that you need. Um, especially with Jonathan Taylor, he did a great job uh, running, running the ball uh, a couple of years back too. Um, but, you know, and it also starts with the old line being able to block and do that and the tight ends, you know, uh, making sure that they're blocking next to us. And, and it takes a whole, you know, even takes the receivers get in there and uh, hitting down safeties as well. So it's, it's definitely a team game, um, but the running back position, you know, they got to make sure they're getting their yards. What about Daniel Jones? He got the big contract this offseason. Happy for him. I guess there's still some some skepticism out there from some people about just how good Daniel is. What did he show you last year in your first year as a Giant? Yeah, he did a great job, especially coming off of the you know, the past couple of years where he's had a different coach. And even with last year, he had a new coach. So he was, you can tell early on in the season that he had a little bit of tightness in him where, you know, he wants to, he wanted to make sure that he was being right all the time. And I think, it, you know, for something simple for me, I would just tell him, you know, to try to stay loose and, and have as much fun out there. And I felt like every game that we were winning, he was opening up a little bit more and you would see a little bit more uh, fire in him and more and more. And, and that swagger was coming out and, and there was a lot of fun that was being played last season. So I think it's going to be even a better season now that he has, you know, he feel he has that little bit of sense of relief in the sense that he has, doesn't have to prove to anybody. And now he can just go out there and have fun and kick ass. And I think that's what was showing last year. That's a really interesting point. Um, I can totally, I mean, new coaching staff, it was a big year for him personally. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Last guys I wanted to ask you about, because I watch them. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much you guys go against them in practice, but Leonard Williams is a stud. But, dude, Dexter Lawrence, I mean, he's up there in terms of the biggest, like, the biggest <laughs> freaks I've seen. I mean, I don't know what they say he weighs, but he weighs a lot, I can tell. And for him to move the way he does, uh, I mean, have you – can you compare it to anybody else you've gone against? What What's that like? No, I haven't really uh, had the opportunity to go against anybody like that. But, you know, there's there's greats that are in the past that you can see. Um, that you, you know, as a childhood, of watching guys um, do that kind of thing. But, you know, he's definitely on a different level. You know, he might be a guy that you don't see for, you know, another few years or, you know, maybe not for a lot longer than that but yeah the way that he can move and for how big he is um you know for me you know i i get to at least uh have the ability to get a little bit of that i feel bad for other guys that have to just you know get into that without ever knowing what that feels like so uh you know for us we have the ability to practice against us which makes us better better players but you know the guys that you know <laughs> it's nuts and you know, we were always watching when we we're on the sideline, we we're on the bench, and, and we see big plays like that. We just, we we're, you know, we we're all doing the eyes. We we're all looking at one another. We we're, we we're like, yeah, we deal with that every day. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, um, he just looks like he hurts. Like, it looks <laughs> like it hurts to him. <laughs> like, no matter what you hit him with, your hand, your wrist, like, your head, it's like, that's not natural. Like, you're not supposed to hit. A 355 pound, like butter, like rolling ball of uh, butcher knives or whatever, like that. Yeah. Mark, you're the man. Um, the camp is the 23rd, which I love. Anybody in Eastern PA try to get there, it's free. I don't know if other people can go. Can other people go? How's it work? Yeah, as long as you register and uh, and fill out your waivers and all that stuff. Um, you know, all you got to do is make sure you're there. <laughs> That's all I ask, you know, because there's a, the opportunity for somebody else um, for registration and all that. Um, so just making sure that, you know, you register, uh, make sure you bring your cleats, any anything that you might need. Um, there's no shoulder pads or anything that will be sh uh, sure provided. All the resources, uh, food, drink, everything will be provided. But just making sure that you have the equipment, uh, you know, 
your cleats and and the proper uh you know pants and shirt and all that stuff i Whatever love it mark glowinski football camp.com mark glowinski football camp.com mark thanks so much man have a great year stay healthy thank you thanks for having me speaking of great just got back from an epic trip to ecuador and the Galapagos Islands with my family. Those of you that check me out on Facebook and Instagram, you can see some of the pics. Thank goodness for Babbel. I mean, you want to talk about a way to learn a language? There is no better way than Babbel. My children especially absolutely loved it. Incredibly helpful for us. You don't need to pay hundreds of dollars for a private tutor. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. The key is we really just looked at the lessons for like how to order food, how to ask for directions, just like the basic stuff, right? We're not gonna, we weren't going to learn the whole language. It was awesome. And right now, for a limited time, you guys can get started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash Ross. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash Ross, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash Ross. Rules and restrictions may apply. Tux takes. All right, Ross, we'll start with Saints running back. Alvin Kamara pleads no contest to a lesser misdemeanor charge from February 22 incident that was in Las Vegas, and he settled the civil lawsuit that was against him as well. Right, which means he's probably going to get disciplined by the NFL before the season starts. Uh, I don't know how many games he's going to miss, but he's going to miss some. There's a lot of retirements to get to. Washington center Chase Roulier retired after six years, including the last two that were injury-plagued. Running back Mark Ingram officially re- retires, and he will replace Reggie Bush on Fox Big Noon kickoff. And longtime Bengals punter Kevin Huber retires after 14 years as well. It's interesting. I don't know if Ingram... Would have been able to play again this year, but that's a pretty nice opportunity to be able to be on Fox Big Noon kickoff. I think that was smart of him to take that. A lot easier on your body. And speaking of body, that's a shame for Rulier because he was a good starting center. But I, you know, I don't blame any guy that ever retires and thinks, you know what, I need to save the rest of my body for the rest of my life. The Jaguars signed tight end Josh Peterson, and no players were selected in yesterday's supplemental draft. Wasn't really expecting there to be. I mean, there's only two receivers available, and Peterson is the son of Doug Peterson. So talk about awkward when they cut him, or if they cut him, that'll be interesting. Northwestern fires head coach Pat Fitzgerald. So, Jack, I'm going to make this my Labatt take of the week because Pat Fitzgerald has been rumored for NFL jobs for years. It's presented by Labatt Blue Light the pristine Canadian Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Everybody is talking about Pat Fitzgerald, Northwestern's administration, Northwestern's president, and rightfully so. My question is, what about the players? I mean, these aren't like 12 and 13-year-olds. These are college division one football players that wanted to do these things. I mean, my freshman year in college, we had to stand on a table during training camp and sing a song. Um, When I was in the NFL as a rookie, we had to get breakfast sandwiches for the veteran offensive lineman on Friday morning. It's like really easy hazing things. The stuff that Northwestern football players did is disgusting allegedly did it's gross why isn't more people talking about why do these guys even want to do that why is this even a thing i mean every all the focus on the administration of Fitzgerald, and i get it but at what point do we start to wonder about these players and this culture or tradition or whatever is going on because it sounds horrendous to me and would make me never want to go northwestern if what's being alleged actually happened Other than that, Jack, uh, I'm fired up for today's fantasy feast. We got Evan Silva, just me and Evan, going over some of the changes to his top 150. Make sure you check that out. I think we're done here. 
Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. Some shout outs for you Pizza Boy Brewing, Sport of Culture, HumanHeadNYC.com, SteakhouseSports.com, Go Bangles.com, BackOfficeSchedule.com. And, of course, the greatest gift you can give anybody ever, a gift from myfrontpagestory.com.